I don't know how to tell this story. Very few people in life get the chance to witness something this horrible as I did that night. I was driving home from an office party. I was a little drunk and feeling tipsy. At one point, I almost dozed off behind the steering wheel when a loud honk of a pickup truck scared the bejesus out of me. I realized this is high time to stop for food and a strong cup of coffee, but after driving for half an hour, I didn't find any fast food chains or restaurants. I was losing hope when I noticed a 7-Eleven store down the road. I stopped right in front of it and with stumbling footsteps entered the store. The old cashier behind the counter was sitting with his eyes closed. Excuse... Uh, excuse me? Uh, what? He replied without opening his eyes. Do you have any coffee? I asked. Is this your first time into a 7-Eleven? Still kept his eyes closed. Oh, uh, kind of. I replied in a drunken voice. He opened his drowsy eyes looked at me with great disappointment and pointed to the left end corner. Welcome to 7-Eleven. The coffee machine is there. I felt a little embarrassed because, honestly, it was indeed my first time in a 7-Eleven. Why? Because I never got the chance to visit one until that night. I walked up to the coffee machine and on my way grabbed a few munchies to go with. The coffee machine was pouring very slowly, or maybe it felt like that because I was drunk. While I waited for the process to be over, I heard the store door open and close. I looked at the counter and saw a woman in her late 50s wearing a pink dress with huge sunflowers printed on it. She stopped at the counter and asked the cashier something. The cashier was already sailing in his dreamland, so he didn't open his eyes this time. The woman turned around when our eyes met. She let out a freaky smile. I know I was intoxicated, but believe me when I say this, the woman had a huge set of teeth. Her teeth were so sharp and pointy that it felt like she filed them artificially. The color of her teeth was a sick yellow, which made me nauseous. I turned my face away from her and concentrated on my coffee. I must have taken one sip of my cup when I heard her footsteps coming towards me. I kept a straight face, trying my best not to get agitated by her. She came close to me and said in a squeaky voice, I don't mean to disturb you, but can you tell me where I can find the dental floss? The cashier seems to be too busy for the customers. <laughs> At any other time, I would have ignored her, but I needed to finish the coffee before going back to the car. And I wanted her off my back, so I pointed to the shelf ahead where I could see some toothbrushes hanging. I think you might find it there. <laughs> you are drunk. I got embarrassed when she said it, but I smiled awkwardly. My husband used to get drunk like you. She thought for a few seconds, like she was trying hard to remember when the last time her husband got drunk. And then said, Until he died. What? I exclaimed in shock. She smiled again, flashing her disgusting teeth, and went back to get dental floss. Honestly, she did need some dental care, along with a mental checkup. I watched her. She stopped at the shelf, picked up a dental floss, and to my surprise, started flossing right there. Yeah, like literally pulled the thread out and started flossing her teeth. Her eyes were set on me, and mine on her. We were caught in each other's stare. After a point, I did look away. I finished my coffee and was all set to leave when I heard a small tingling sound. The sound of a bead dropping on the floor. What happened next will forever be imprinted in my memory. I looked down to see what she dropped and saw a big, sharp yellow tooth with blood stains on its ends lying on the floor. The woman wasn't just flossing her teeth, she was flossing them violently enough for them to fall out one by one. She was chopping her tooth one by one from her gums. Her face looked horrifying. There were no signs of pain even though her gums bled. 
She was staring at me without blinking and continuing to floss like a barbarian. I don't know why she was doing this, but fear choked my throat and I forgot to scream. My legs were frozen, palms were sweating. I wanted to scream and run away, but couldn't. I don't know how long I stood like that and watched the woman getting rid of her teeth. Once she was done, she wiped her bleeding mouth with a handkerchief and then smiled at me one last time. But this time, her smile was even freakier. A set of swollen, empty gums forming the most petrifying smile in the world. She calmly walked back to the counter, kept a dollar in front of the sleepy cashier, and left the store. The pile of bloody teeth was still scattered on the floor, and I could feel my stomach churn. I ran outside and vomited my butt off. I somehow drove back home and got very bad dreams throughout the night. But the story doesn't end there. A month later, I was sitting in my living room, sipping morning coffee, when I turned to the news. I saw her again, but this time with more context. The caption read, Cannibal wife ate husband and then pulled out her teeth. Yes, that psycho woman was a murderer turned cannibal who killed her husband and then feasted on her husband's flesh. The news reporter also said that when the cops asked her why she pulled out her teeth, she laughed, saying, I punished myself for being a bad wife, but I swear, he tasted so mouthwatering. <laughs> Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If so, please leave a like. And also, a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you want to support this channel and make this channel reach the 1 million mark, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can change your mind later. Enjoy. I work as a gas station employee in the state of Maine. It's a pretty quiet job, but I don't mind it. It's just another day when a man in a thick coat and a hat comes into the store and asks for a pack of bubble gum. Anything else I can get for you? That'll be all. All right, sir. Your total is $3.92. Have a great day. I ring him up and he pays cash and leaves. That happens every day. You feel me? Well, it happened differently today. Maine is a state that you can't ever really describe unless you've been there. The cold, desolate, gray fog rolled in from the Atlantic, a blizzard setting in just as I was about to close up shop. It's nights like these that make me wonder if I'm really cut out for this job. Anyway, I digress. Let me explain to you what happened to me today and why I'm never going back to that 7-Eleven again. I waved goodbye to the customer as he went out into the cold night, and I followed him out the door. The clock was a few minutes before the time I had to close anyway, so I figured I'd close early and bid farewell to that 7-Eleven. After all, nobody would be out in a blizzard like this, and I wouldn't be too long. It was then that I noticed the man had stopped at the corner of the lot, just staring at me. Nodding to him, I made my way back toward my car but the man started loitering towards me. Hey boy, he said. You finished up at that 7-Eleven? Mind giving me a ride home? Isn't that your truck over there? I asked, pointing to the black pickup parked a few feet away. I could feel the hair standing on the back of my neck, but I tried to stay calm. He smiled and shook his head, mumbling something about the cold being too much. I sighed and started to unlock my car door, but something made me look back. The man was still standing there, his eyes boring into me with an expression I can only describe as hungry. I rushed to the car and locked the doors, my heart pounding in my chest. I thought I heard him say something, but I was too scared to stay around and find out. Starting my car, I swiveled my head to make sure he wasn't following me. To my relief, I heard the engine of a truck rev as he pulled out of the parking lot, the smoke from his exhaust clouding the night sky. I drove home faster than I ever had before, watching the shadows of the trees as they danced in my rearview mirror. The skies quickly darkened as I settled in for my near-hour drive into the main wilderness to the next town over, where I lived. For those who don't live in Maine, I want you to imagine it. The cold 
the darkness and the silence. I never felt so alone in my life. As I got closer to home, a voice in my head told me to look into my rearview mirror one last time before turning down my lane. A chill ran up my spine, and I froze. The man in the hat was following me. His truck was barely visible in the darkness, but I recognized it easily. It was a dirty white with dents and scratches all over the hood. I felt chilled, and although I figured it was a coincidence, something inside me told me that it definitely wasn't. There's no chance he lives in the same direction as I do, right? I whispered to myself, my stomach tied in knots. He had to. As I drove, though, I didn't turn into my driveway like I wanted to, and I instead turned down a street on the opposite side of the road. I looked into my rearview mirror, and to my relief, he had vanished. My relief was short-lived, though, as around the corner I saw headlights and the faint silhouette of the truck in my rearview mirror. He had followed my turn, and I felt fear grip my heart. I drove faster, my hands shaking on the wheel as I took another turn, making sure this time that it was down an alley that was known to not have streetlights. Parking quickly and turning off my engine, I sat there staring behind me. In a few seconds, I heard his truck idling now as he slowly drove past the alleyway. With my heart in my chest, I waited another few seconds before I dared start my car and drive home. As I cautiously backed my car out of the alleyway, I felt chills on my spine, as if someone was watching me, and I quickly drove back as fast as I could. Suddenly, however, as I turned my head away from the back of my car and faced the front windshield, my heart stopped and my blood ran cold. The same man in the hat and coat was standing there, with a look in his eyes that I can only describe as pure evil. He stared at me as I sped away, and I have to say that I'm still shivering thinking about his eyes. They were black and brown with red bloodshot lines running across them, a look of pure horror and malice that will haunt me for the rest of my life. I had enough, and perhaps the cold air drove me a bit crazy. Rolling down my window, I screamed over to him. What the heck do you want from me? Nothing, he replied. Nothing came from his red and brutalized lips as they cracked into a smile. It was a simple response, but you never expect it. Think about it. Whenever somebody asks the question in the movies, they expect some sort of answer. But this man simply said nothing and continued to stare at me with those eyes of pure evil. He did respond in another way, though. He began to walk towards me, his strides slowing as he got closer. I hit the gas and sped away, not looking back until I was halfway home. Pulling up at my house, I hurriedly got out of the car and quickly locked all the windows and doors. I was terrified, with images of that man filling my head as I stared through the window looking for any sign of him. As I write this, I'm keeping the lights on in the house, and I'm not venturing out for anything. I'm not sure what he wanted, but it was enough to make me never want to go back to that 7-Eleven again. And the worst part about all this is that he might still be out there, lurking in the night somewhere, waiting for his next victim. Or even worse, he could be right outside of my house as I'm writing this. It might just be my imagination, but I swear I heard the soft idling of a truck just beyond the streetlight that I pass by every night. If he somehow found my driveway, he's not getting in, and I'm not leaving my house. Not until the sun rises, at least. Hey, my name is Elodie, and believe me when I tell you I would do anything for my kids. I know all mothers say that, but I had a chance to prove it at 7-Eleven. It all happened one afternoon when I went with my kids to 7-Eleven. Their father abandoned us when I was pregnant with the twins, so I had to take them everywhere when my parents couldn't take care of them. That day, the boys had not gone to school because one of them was sick, and I suspected that the sister might get sick and infect her classmates. When we arrived at 7-Eleven, <laughs> let's just say he didn't look sick anymore. Mom, I want ice cream. Mom, if he eats ice cream, I want ice cream too. It's not fair. I'm sick. 
Liar, you're not sick. Look how well you are. <sighs> Guys. Mom, Claudette is bothering me. Tell her I'm sick. Don't call me by my full name. I'll call you whatever I want to, Claudette. Guys. <laughs> you're so mean. I'm sick and you still yell at me? Kids, stop it. As soon as we get out of here, I'll buy you ice cream, okay? But only if you behave yourselves. Okay, okay Mom. Kids, am I right? <laughs> when I turned around, a man was behind me. He had a generous face and a friendly smile. His eyes were wide open, and waiting for a response, he froze, staring at me. Oh, I'm sorry. You scared me. Yes, they are terrible. They're twins, aren't they? Hey, you should behave yourselves and not get Mom in trouble. Yes, yes. sir. They seem out of control, but they're very good children. <laughs> well, we should get going. A pleasure, sir. My pleasure. Do you come here often? Sometimes. Have a nice day. Very uncomfortable, I left with my children from that section. That man was really awkward. Didn't you like that man, Mom? I think the man liked Mom. No way. Don't talk with people like that. That man was a creep. The next few minutes were normal. I didn't see the man anymore, and by the time I got to the checkout line, I had forgotten all about him. A few seconds after I arrived, the man stood behind me. Nice day, isn't it? Yes, sir. A little annoyed, I ignored him. You know, I'm new to the neighborhood, and I really know few places to shop. I'm a very lonely man who can't have children, so it's a pleasure to see friendly people like you. My mom thinks you're a- Alphonse! Ignore him, sir. He's just a boy. I hope you can adapt to the neighborhood as soon as possible. I have to admit that his little speech gave me some pity, but I was still very uncomfortable with his presence. I wanted him to get away as soon as possible. No problem. I understand that children can behave very badly. Sometimes. Don't you wish they were dead? Hearing those words, my blood ran cold. I turned around, furious. What did you say? Oh, calm down, dear. It was just a metaphor. No one would want these angels to die, right? Sir, you are a sick man. Don't ever speak to me or my children again. Do you understand? Of course. Still smiling, as if what I had to say had not affected him. I am sorry for having such a big imagination. I will not bother you anymore. Still furious, I was about to turn away, but something caught my attention, and I had to tell him. Wait a minute. Is your little bag empty? You've been here for almost 20 minutes and you haven't bought anything? Besides, what are you doing in line? Are you following us? At this point, I was already screaming. Not only did I not care if anyone heard us, but I wanted them to. Oh, I guess I didn't get anything, did I? That means I don't have to wait in line to leave. <laughs> have a nice day. And with that, he simply left. When I went to turn it off, the cashier offered me to go with someone from security, which I accepted and a man escorted us to the car. When we arrived, the security man greeted us and I opened my car door. I knew nothing was wrong, that the man was gone, but I still felt very uncomfortable. I put all my shopping bags into my SUV, and before I left, my son asked me to close it. Al, it's not a good time for this. But you promised me, Mom. Please, let me close the back door. You promised, Mom. Don't be a liar. Ugh. All right, but make it quick. I'll go start the engine. Yay! While Al was closing the trunk, I was looking at ice cream shop locations on my cell phone with Claudette. I knew it wasn't the best time, but if I didn't do it now, she was going to yell at me while I was driving, and that was going to be a problem. Mom, are you going to get lemon ice cream? Al, when did you get here? Long ago. I just finished closing the door. But honey, the trunk is still open. What? You didn't close it all the way, and it opened. Let me close it. After closing the trunk, I started the SUV and we left. We were going to go to an ice cream shop a few blocks away and order ice cream to eat at home, but something caught my attention. Kids, what are you looking at back there? Mom, there's something moving under the doggy padding. Is it a rat? What? Kids, get out of there. Oh, <laughs> I'm busted. Ah! 
I couldn't believe my eyes. The man from before with the maniacal, terrifying smile was in the car. My children tried to run away, but they were both wearing seatbelts. What are you doing here? I'm calling the police. Get out of here now! No, don't stop the car. The kids want to eat ice cream. You're a... Leave him alone. He's just a kid. I know, isn't that lovely? I love kids. I could never do anything bad to little Al. Please let me go. Hey, how about instead of eating ice cream, let's go straight home. I'd love to get to know them better. Listen to me, you psycho. If you think I'm taking you to my house, you're too- No, you listen to me. If you ever yell at me or disrespect me again, I will use this knife to open the child like a fish. Do you understand? Please, don't do anything to him. No, 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 I wouldn't do anything to him. I I'm sorry I got angry like that. What's your name? Elodie. Listen to me, Elodie. I'm not gonna lie to you. I like your children. Not romantically, of course. <laughs> Mom, I'm scared. Take it easy, Claudette. Everything will be all right. Indeed. Look, I'm not gonna hurt you or your children. I just want you to give me little Al. What? Oh, come on. I've always wanted a child, and nobody wants to have one with me. They won't even let me adopt. You have two. You can give me one. I promise I'll take care of it. I won't give you any of my children. Leave us alone or you'll pay. What am I going to pay for? How can you be so selfish? You know what? I warned you not to disrespect me. Now I'll be left with one child and you with none. Filled with rage, the psychopath lunged at Claudette. Terrified, I did the only thing I could do to save her. In the last few minutes, I had driven to a longer, uninhabited road, so I was able to increase the speed of the SUV. I did it so that at this moment, when everything came to its worst, I could do this. I had made it. My children were safe. But as I looked out the window, I saw the psychopath was not only moving, but also standing up. Oh no, you're not standing up anymore. Unable to control my anger, I ran over the man at full speed. After that, he didn't move anymore. Soon after, the police stopped me until they could figure out what was going on. Since this happened recently, I still don't know if I can go to jail for what happened, but I have no regrets. Shortly after, I found out that the man I hit had charges of sexual abuse. The police told me that there probably won't be any problems, but whatever the outcome, I'm happy to make this world a better place for my children.